Francis of Assisi was born over 800 years ago. He was the son of a wealthy cloth merchant, and yet we know that he gave it all away, and very dramatically too, because outside his father's workplace, he took off all his clothes and, stripped naked, handed it all back to Dad. And that's how he dramatically said, I want to give everything and give my life to God, especially for the poor. He'd been motivated in his prayer as he prayed before beautiful crucifix. We're familiar with the Franciscan crucifix. He'd got the message, message from Jesus to build up his church. And so he gathered other young men around him and they went down the valley and down the flat and went to an old place that was collapsing, an old church, and started to get a few more stones together to build it up. And as he continued his prayer, he got the message more correctly. Not the building, Francis, <clears throat> but the people. Build up my people. <clears throat> and it wasn't to be build up the church for the church's sake. No, it was to build up the church so that the church could be through him and with him and around him for the poor, particularly. The material, materially poor and the spiritually poor. The best way to uh, help people is to identify with them, to be one as possible with them. And that's why it's so important with you young people, you are the ones most of all who influence your peers, youth to youth, and so poor to the poor. People to, as we are now to, a spiritually poor. And Francis was the simple, he had very solid message of the love of God for everyone. That's the message they pre preached in various ways as they moved around Italy and other parts of Europe. So to many of his time, especially to the wealthy, Francis would have been regarded as what Sister Liz was telling us about yesterday, one of those weirdos. And yet to others, of course, he was certainly one of those that the Apostolic Nuncio was telling us about, a great dreamer. Within 10 years, he had 5,000 followers with him, working as Franciscans. He also helped set up a uh, congregation of sisters, the Poor Clares. Over 18, 800 years have passed, and the Franciscans are still very strong in our church around the world. A great dreamer who, with the grace of God, achieved so much. Our present Pope chose Francis of Assisi, we know, as the name, as a Pope. And I remember telling bishops this morning, I go to the chiropractor from time to time to loosen me up, get a bit old and stiff as the years go on. And this was in the uh, one time between Pope Benedict and the new one, and he said, um, what kind of a Pope do you think we need? He says, Bishop, I said, what do you think we need? And he said, oh, we need somebody charismatic who'll be a great leader, you know, and draw us all. Anyhow, I think he was on the money. But um, he said, the, uh, my chiropractor's called Frank, and he said, he'll take Francis. I said, no way, Frank, I said. Nobody's ever had that name as a pope. And there we are. So Francis, I had to go back next treatment and eat humble pie. So, and why did the Pope choose Francis? It wasn't Francis Saviour, one of the great Jesuits, the order he belongs to. It was Francis of Assisi. Why? Because he's told us he wants a poor church for the poor. And in his talk to World Youth Day, or to the youth for this World Youth Day, he said, we have poverty in so many ways today here in our own country. 
There is material poor for sure. But there's unemployment, and it's around the world. There's migration, there's addictions of all kinds. He mentions those specifically. He's always concerned about employment for young people. And we know there's the spiritually poor, of course. And this, even in Australia, it's across cultures. I was thinking, who are the particularly poor? Well, it's across all cultures, from the first inhabitants to the last arrivals. Yes, there are many nowadays, right here where we are, that still need the good news, the joy of the gospel. And so all of us who are baptised have been called to bear the joy of the gospel to others. And as we gather as young leaders around Australia, you are bearers of that. Bearers of the good news of the gospel that everyone is valued by God. Everyone is deeply loved by God. Everyone deserves to live with dignity. As young people, you can't solve all that, and none of us can. But as young people and people who've got youth on your side, you do lots of these things now. And as I talk to a few of you and see what you're doing and what you're studying for and preparing for, I know that you'll be greater and future leaders in our country. And some of you will be able to work away in those areas of unemployment or addiction or the areas of refugees for a just solution to that, a very difficult one, but to work away as future leaders in our country. It's a long term, all these things are long term. Today we had two readings, they're just the readings of the day, one from the book of Job, and that was towards the end of that wonderful book, where God restored everything that he had lost. And we know that he was tested severely by Satan, and he'd lost possessions, farm, herds, house, family, all gone, and he's on the dump heap. And today's reading was about God restoring all that. And even mentioned some of the, uh, all his family as well, and all his possessions. And some of the girls there are the fancy having turtle dove and mascara, you know, a few good names for the future for those who might have little girls. So there we are, that's, but God, what happened? Job lost it all, but it never lost his faith in God and trust in God. And the gospel is about Jesus sending out 72. He's always sending out. He's called us and sends us out. So we've all been, as I've said, as I've said sent out. And basically, either to restore to people what they've lost or to offer what a lot of people don't have to bring more love and more purpose and meaning to people in different ways. And each of us here, we know Jesus. The Father, as he said in the Gospel today, has revealed Jesus to us. We've all received the gift of Jesus from our loving Father. So we know him and we know he is with us as we go out. We're never alone. And we know that as we give, Jesus is there with his cross, but also with the power of his resurrection. Francis of Assisi knew that as he gave totally to others and served others, he carried the cross. But he was also able, with the grace of God, as it said, to bring about so much renewal and so much help to so many people. That was the power of Christ's resurrection within him and within his group. And that's why, as we continue the Mass now, the Mass is so central to our lives as we go out. Because here again is Jesus and his death 
and resurrection is renewed. That one saving death of Jesus and rising from the dead, that one great act of saving love of the Son of God for us is made present in a sacramental way again each Mass. The same act in a different way so that he is here with us and he helps us and strengthens us to carry the cross of service and to live our faith and to share the gospel. That costs, but he will strengthen us each Eucharist and also the power of his resurrection will work through us and in us to bring about joy and to uplift people and to bring about renewal to many of those around us.